Welcome back. It's me, it's me, it's Mr. Sully. So I am back with you today. We're going to be talking about inverses. All right, inverses of exponential expressions. Before you do that, remember inverse is kind of like the opposite. So if you want to think of it that way, the inverse of cool would be this guy, Mr. Brust. I don't know. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to it. So here we have an exponential function. Let's just write some of these um, points out so we know what they are. Um, it's clear we have them right here, but so this is negative 1, 0.5, or 1 half, right? Then this point here is 0, 1. The next one is 1, 2, 2, and 4, 3, and 8. All right, so that is our exponential function with base, base 2. Remember, that's key here. All right, so now let's talk about the logarithm with a base of 2. Now, we could go in here and, and calculate these without a calculator, for sure. I'm just going to save us some time here. Let's take a look here. So, 1, I see uh, 1, 0. That's a good one. And 2, 1. So, I'm going to write those down. Um, 1, 0, and 2, 1. Let's see if we can find some other good good numbers here. Uh, 4, 2, right? What, what, what do I mean by good numbers? I'm just thinking of um, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy no decimal, no hassle. Um, these are all decimals. Oh, there's an 8, 3 is a good one. All right. 8, 3. All right. So I'm missing one. Uh, let's hopefully, let's, let's see if we can get a good pattern here. 3, 8, 8, 3, mm, 2, 4, 4, 2, 1, 2, 2. Eh, ah, they're just backwards, right? So this is going to be 0.5 or 1 half and negative 1. So now we can kind of plot these, right? So I have 1 half and negative 1. I have 1 and 0. I have 2 and 1. I have 4 and 2. And I have 8 all the way down here and 3. And if I'm really, really good, I can draw this logarithmic graph. Now, of course, I'm not really, really good at it, but you get the point. These two things are inverses, all right? So let's let's talk about what that means for a second. So the big thing is logarithmic functions are inverses of, of exponential functions and vice versa. Exponential functions are inverses of logarithmic functions. So what's that mean? Well, the first thing it means is that the graphs are a reflection in the function h of a x equals x, just y equals x all right <clears throat> what's it mean to be a reflection let's take a look here so if i were to draw that line y equals x right that's start at zero slope of one that's up here whoa that's really bad but what does it mean it's a reflection so this point reflects over to here this point three eight reflects to here eight three there's an a, a, a similar point all over that that also means here, we know that this exponential has this uh, asymptote here of the x-axis. So what is that going to mean here? There's going to be an asymptote here on the y-axis. All right, so we have a reflection. We're going to talk more about graphs later, but I just want you to understand that because they're inverses, that's one of the things it means there. It's going to be a reflection in the line y equals x. All right, that's great. What else, cool Mr. Sullivan? Oh, let's see here. The domain of the exponential function is the range of the logarithmic function. So the domain of the exponential, so the x's, are the y's of the logarithmic function. No way. That can't be true. Let's see. Here's my x's. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So my x's are my y's and my logarithmic. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. No way! It's true incredible all right so we got that going that's awesome likewise the range of my exponential is my domain of my logs half half one one two two four four eight eight no way super cool i know you must be pumped about that let's make sure you write that and understand that down so the domain of the exponential is the range of the logarithmic and vice versa the y's the the range of the exponential is the whoop this should say domain the domain of the logarithmic or the x values of the log all right they are inverses 
What else is true about inverses? The oper operations undo each other. So much like multiplying by 2, I can undo it by dividing by 2. Logs can undo exponents. Hmm, interesting. Let's talk more about that later. And very important, we have this situation where if I place the composition of functions, if I place g of x into f of x, it's going to be the same as if I place f of x into g of x. And when I get it, both sides are going to equal just x. All right, we'll talk more about these. Okay, we'll talk more about these. Don't worry too much. Let's see what we got. All right, so first thing here, it says, describe this function as exponential or logarithmic, and then find points for its inverse. All right, so I want to go back to my table real quick, because I have two tables here. Let's talk about exponential functions. You'll notice that the x values go up additively, right? They add one. Even if I skip some, it's obvious that these are going and changing by adding. Whereas my y's, when I have an exponential, my y's are going up multiplicatively. All right. Okay, now, that means the inverse is true over here. My x's are going up multiplicatively for logarithmic, and my y's are going up additively. So, let's take a look. All right. First thing we need to know is that exponential logarithmic, well, my x's are going up additively. They're adding one each time, and my y's are multiplying by 3 every time. So that means this is exponential. So I know it's exponential, and I know it's exponential because the y values are going up multiplicatively. Now let's find an inverse of this function. Very easy. I'm going to take my domain and make it my range. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to make my range my domain, 1 3rd, 1, 3, 9, 27, because I know that when I have inverses, the x values become the y values, and the y values become the x values. Easy peasy. All right. I want you to try number two all on your own here, so just pause it and try it all on your own. All right, so first, I said it was logarithmic. I know that these don't go up additively all the way, but the pattern is true. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 4. I know it looks like I'm skipping, but I'm I'm really am skipping one, right? right? I'm skipping a value of 3. Doesn't mean it changes anything. It's still, these are going up additively, and my x values are going up multiplicatively. And when my x values go up multiplicatively, I have a logarithmic function. All right. Then I took my range, made it my, dom uh, my, I took my range, made it my domain of my exponential inverse. I took my domain and it was the range of my exponential inverse of that function all right so the the function was logarithmic it's inverse exponential all right so inverses undo each other Ooh. all right here we go this is what i'm talking about this is kind of like a property right like you know that uh two times x if i divide by two i'm left with just x okay the same thing is true for inverses, but we have to be very careful here because I'm doing base 2 here. So that means if I want to undo this, I have to take the log of that, but it has to be the exact same base. So log base 2 of 2 of x is going to cancel everything out and give me just what's here in my exponent, x. All right, over here, if I want to do this, all right, I have a log. So the inverse of doing the log is going to be an exponent. So I have to treat this like an exponent. So I'm going to do 2, whoa, base 2, because it's base 2. If this was base 12, it'd be 12, to the log of 2 to the x. When I have this situation, these undo each other because the bases are the same. And what's left? The exponent. That is something you, you need to learn. All right, so are the following inverses of each other? If I put one into the other, does it equal x? I think you see that. So let's do f of g of x. So I'm going to put g of x in here. So that means 2 to the x, but that now is g of x. So I'm putting all of this into it. So 2 to the log 2 of x, 
And we just showed you that when that's true, all of this cancels and I'm left with what's left here, which is just X. Great, let's try putting this one into that one. So I have log two of, what am I putting in? Two to the X. And we learned that these undo each other because the bases are the same and what's left, this exponent. So f of g of x gives me x, g of f of x gives me x, and it is x. That means, yes, they are truly inverses. Okay, let's try another one. Here we go. Find the inverse of each function. All right, so I want to actually find this inverse. So here we go. I'm going to rewrite this as y. y equals 3 log 5, base 5 to the x. So I want to get um, the inverse. That means I, my y value should be my x value, and it means my x value should be my y value. All right, and I want to solve for y here. So first thing I have is 3 times that, so i got to divide by 3. So I'm going to divide this by 3. So now I'm going to have this is x over 3. Could I have written this as 1 third times x? Yeah, absolutely. Just de depends what you like. Is there one better than the other? Not in my mind. All right, now I have to ask myself, I need to get y by itself. How do I get y by itself? Well, I just learned that this base of 5, because I have a log, I can make this an exponent. If I make this side an exponent, I have to make this side an exponent because I have to do the same thing to both sides. Well, now all of this cancels and I get y. And then what's the left on this side? 5 to the x over 3 equals y. Or we could write that as the inverse of f of x. Okay? 5 to the x over 3. All right, let's try this one. So I have y equals 10 over x uh, over 6. We need to change it because my y needs to become my x's. And my x needs to become my y's. Now we got to ask ourselves a question. Oof. I need to get rid of that 10 because it's, it's, it's an exponent here. How do I do that? How do I cancel this exponent and get this, very, this exponent to the bottom? Well, I can take a log. What log do I need? I need the exact same base as 10. So I need to take log base 10, which is our common log, so I don't have to write it. So I'm going to take log of both sides. Because when the base of my log and this number are the same, this all cancels out, and we're left with just the exponent. And this should be pretty easy to solve here. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be a y. My handwriting is terrible. The opposite of divide by 6 is multiply. So the answer should be 6 times the log of x equals y, or our inverse of f. All right? And remember, that's how we talk about the inverse. f prime, f inverse of, uh, or uh, f to the first power is the inverse of x. Okay? I want you to pause the video and try these two questions on your own. All right, so for the first one, I have f of g of x here. I have 5 to the 4 times my function, which was 4 log 5 of x. Now, the log 5 of x part cancels, right? But I have a 4 here. So 4 times 4 is 16. And that, that part cancels a 5 and the log 5. So I have 16x. All right, now that is not x. So right now I know they're not inverses. But I did the other one too. So I plugged in f of x into g. 4 times log base 5 of my function, 5 to the 4x. This all canceled out. So I have 4 times 4 to the x, which is 16x. They're the same. They equal the same thing. But do they equal x? No, they don't equal x. That means they are not inverses. Number two. I, first of all, took my y's and made it my x's, and my x my y. I did the opposite of multiplying by 10, which is dividing by 10. Now this is the new part here. It was log base 2, so I had to take it to the exponent of base 2, base 2 on this side, 
all of this cancel because two to the log of two, that cancels, that's the, the inverses, so that gives me y, and my inverse is two to the x over 10, all right? So uh, both of those are right. You could have written it as two to the one-tenth x. That would have been the same thing as well, okay? There you have it. Make sure you're asking lots of good questions. Keep up the great work, and don't forget to dream big out there.